my guest today and I actually talk about being naked. <laughs> Seriously, you don't want to miss this. We just also talk about cellulite and we talk about why you may be struggling with moving as much as you know that you should or that you want to actually, but if it doesn't feel good, it doesn't feel good. And we've got some solutions for that today. So I want you to dive right in. I'm going to introduce you to my guest and we will get rocking and rolling. First though, I am Deborah Atkinson. You're listening to Flipping 50, where I address your top struggles and concerns. And most of all, we hope to inspire you to change the way that you age by changing the expectations about aging, what you think about 65, 75, or 85 looking and feeling like for you. So if you haven't gone there lately, you might want to spend a little time there and imagine it. And then let's do what we need to to get there. I share what to eat, how to move, and how to change your mindset so you can have the energy and vitality that you want, need, and serve in this second and better half. And I am so grateful that I'm able to bring you my guest today, Sue Hitzman. She's an internationally recognized neurofascia science and research educator, manual therapist, exercise physiologist, and founding member of the Fascia Research Society. She's the founder and creator of the MELT Method. Many of you know her, a simple self-care technique that addresses the missing link to pain-free living, hydrated, supple fascia, and a stable balanced nervous system. She's authored two best-selling books and is the CEO of Longevity Fitness Incorporated, an online customer and professional education business. So let's dive in. Sue, thank you so much for taking time out to join me here. Oh, I'm so privileged. Thanks so much for having me on the show. Thank you. And, and, you know, I totally don't have to tell them about the trouble we've had in the green room, but I mean, really, this woman has staying power. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Technology makes us not feel so bright, but it's supposed <laughs> to make us feel smarter. But every time I turn on my smart TV, I think, my God, I, I've just become an idiot. <laughs> yes. So very true. All right. So we're going to really school all of our listeners And maybe for some, it's a refresher course. For others, it's a, okay, and yes, I've heard this term over and over again, but I really am not sure I could tell a friend what that means. So what is fascia? It's a really great question. And that's actually been the most cutting edge term to redefine in the past 20 years. And actually the scientific committee is now saying it's all of the collagenous tissue, including the cells in the body, Um, that create, support, and protect every other system in the body. Uh, So it's also on a cellular level, it's called the extracellular matrix. But what is it is more like, what, what is it doing for you, right? What's its role, right? So fascia is like a three-dimensional fluid-based architectural matrix under our skin, what provides us our shape, what gives us our it just is what gives us our human shape. It's what gives every structure in your body space as well as connection to everything else. And this, this is a system. And, and that's kind of, I want to point this out is that in science, there's tissue, there's organs and there's systems. And we call it fascial tissue, but really it's far more than just a tissue. We say it's the largest sensory organ in the human body. And in fact, it's also a system on a cellular level Fascia is providing not only your muscles and bone support, so it's not just what gives your joint shock absorption and your muscle synergy, that's a term called myofascia, which is very popular in fitness, but Mm. fascia on a global level is the system that is supporting your nervous system your cells. It's giving your cells their shape. It gives your cells a stable environment to live in. It is the system that stabilizes your lymphatic system, your hormonal system. So fascia really, I could, I could relate fascia to every other system in your body. When we talk about the word stability, because I'm not saying stability, like how will you balance on a BOSU ball? We're talking about neurological, chemical, psychological, emotional stability, Fascia plays a role to everything. I could link fascia to every other system in your body and how you feel, how you move, how you believe <laughs> life and longevity should be. Fascia is playing a role in all of it. Okay. Well, we need to have a talk with her. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 
Okay. So I'm going to have you back up and repeat. So I think for listeners who are most familiar with fascia from the, oh, I know I should foam roll. I know I should foam roll. I just haven't foam rolled. So they're more familiar with the myofascia, myofascial release. Can you distinct make the distinction again between that and fascia as we're talking about it and in the role each play and maybe we need to dive into is foam rolling even beneficial it's a great question and you know because i use something that looks like a roller everybody sees melt and they're like oh it's foam rolling and i'm like okay we don't really even roll very much and i don't believe that fascia releases at all it rehydrates but the term release to me is about taking uh, pressure away from something when you release something, right? Something's under pressure and you're releasing it. But in, in a lot of cases, we're actually under tension, not compression, right? So fascia is kind of a tension compression management system. So in the world of movement, it's widely understood by doctors and by uh, people in fitness that fascia is what is giving your muscles synergy and balance, so collagen is primarily, uh, a fascia is primarily made up of collagen. And we know how important collagen is, right? It's what keeps your skin lifted and smooth. And the cells in your fascial system are active. And they are like little housekeepers tinkering with this uh, fibrous elements of fascia. And it's, it's morphing and adjusting it so that you always have sort of a pre-stress capability for when you move. The, the problem with the, these terms is that in recent times, we now understand that fascia has active contractile properties in it because the cells themselves, these mechanoreceptors, will actually pull, you know, tissues together, especially like when you have a cut, right? It's pulling the, the, the sides of your skin back together so you repair. So fascia is playing a role in cellular repair, it, it, in tissue damage. It is helping us repair uh muscles when they become overstretched or strained. And in the term of myofascia, this is really just a term to help people understand at what level we're speaking about fascia. So we could talk about perifascia, which is the fascia between the fascial tissues. You could talk about myofascia, which is relating to muscle. You could talk about neural fascia, the fascia around your nerves. Um, you know, osteoblasts, osteoclasts, these, these cells that are producing fascia around your bones. So it's really just about um, the topography of the body when you talk about myofascia. But for sure, um, when, you know, if you're asking me that question, you know, to get back to that question, is foam rolling beneficial? I think if you think something is helping you, then it probably is helping you in some way. Because if your mind thinks that it's helping you, then I think that we... I think that's good, right? You know, mm -hmm. but then again, people think, you know, like shooting themselves up with heroin might be a good idea. And we know that that's not really a very good idea. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, so we're drinking alcohol at the end of the day. Well, I hear that there's serutins in my wine. So I'm going to drink two, four bottles of wine. So I get my serutins. Yeah. It's like, no. So there's a, there's a little bit of a payback with that. So with foam rolling, traditional foam rolling was about a, restoring blood flow to muscle. And the principle was that you would apply compression to an area of your body. And as you compress, you push blood flow away. And then if you iron it like a shirt, the thing is, you'll hear a lot of smart people tell you to iron yourself like a shirt. And when you find something that feels lumpy, you're going to land on it and dig it out like you'll win an award for inflicting pain on your body. And I always say, well, if getting out of pain means inflicting pain to get out of it, you're like, you're already in a place of like, does this really make any sense? It doesn't, it doesn't even sound like the best route of resolution for pain is inflicting pain. So I think it's about how you apply any tool to your body. And in the melt method, I always say that soft tissue like soft tools. And that's why in all of the years that I have been trying to share light touch therapeutic techniques with people is because in my practice, I found that bodies would change more quickly and more long lasting changes. I would see in my clients when I would really slow down, apply direct pressure that didn't cause my client pain, that I took more time in exploring and feeling and following their tissue than I did trying to change something. So this idea that you're going to foam roll and like on your IT band, like you're going to change the fascial tissue is not so true. And we know in literature and in the research that it doesn't, the fat, the collagen actually takes a fairly long time to change, but the fluid perfusion in fascia, the glycoaminoglycans, these fluid-based 
carbohydrates with like, you know, proteins in them and that, that kind of gel up the, the fluids in fascia to bind it and keep it stable. That stuff is quite, quite adaptable. Um, and that's where you can make pretty immediate changes. It's just understanding how to utilize tension or compression using a tool, whether it's a roller or a ball or whatever, uh, or, or, or a hand of a therapist. Um, fascia is a tension compression management system. Okay. So I'm going to be remiss and, and all of my listeners are going to say, wait, but you didn't ask her about cellulite. So as you were talking about, you know, ironing out, that's where they've heard that term. And, and a while back, there were a couple of studies that came out and that said, if you do things in this step-by-step-by-step way, that you may get some benefit in reduced appearance. And we have to carefully say those words, reduced appearance of cellulite. It's not going to disappear. Talk talk about that a little bit. Yeah, because I mean, first of all, you can't get rid of cellulite like you can't get rid of your femur. You can't get rid of your elbow. Right. It's like, it's actually cellulite or the texture. What we need to understand is that the texture that you're seeing is perfectly normal. Okay. That, that even in a baby, if you squeeze a baby's thigh, you'll sort of see the dimple. And what that is, is fascia because it's collagen is adhered on the underside of your skin. And if the tissue, if you crimp it and you push fluid away from it, it kind of looks like a sponge. So it's like the, the, the tethers of a kite are pulling your skin's layer in there. And, and what we understand about, uh, you know, uh, cellulite is that if the fascia in the, in the collagen is always under this kind of tether, like locking tension or compression, the areas that we either put too much pressure on or too much tension to, you have a higher you know, um, prevalence for seeing the texture of the underlying substance, which is your superficial fascia. And, and it's just that fat kind of gets trapped between these weakened collagen bindings and kind of pokes through. And now as we age, we see the shape of the underlying substance, which does have a texture to it. I mean, the, the superficial fascia has a texture. It looks like a sponge. Actually, if we took all the fat away, it still looks like a sponge under there, which is what you see on your skin's surface. Now, The thing about using tools to reduce the appearance of it is that you want to do two things to your superficial tissue because it is like a sponge. You want to get fluid back into the collagen matrix to the superficial regions, and you also want to get blood flow back there. So there are some tools where there are some women telling you to scratch your fascia and bruise yourself everywhere. And I think that's self-mutilation, and I find that offensive. I don't care even if it did work. I think telling women to scratch at their tissue. She's got this thing called beaver blasting or something like you're going to scratch your labia so that they're more plump. And I'm like, you know what? Masturbate people. Can we all just masturbate? And do <laughs> first? I, I, I don't understand what you're saying. Like make it feel good. Why would you take a, a hard object and scratch at your labial tissue? I don't know, but let's get back to this. <laughs> I digress. <laughs> I will so, definitely yeah. put in R rating on this one. Okay. Just in case you have children in the car. But <laughs> well, my, my point here is that with collagen or with a, with a, a cellulite that what you have to understand to get fluid into the superficial fascia, you have to be able to pin the skin and create a twisting. So if anybody's listening, just take your left hand and grab onto your right forearm and squeeze it and then just twist and don't rub your hand up against your forearm, but realize that there's something going on in the underlying substances. And that's what you want to do is kind of compress and twist that tissue. Um, and we've done like a 30 day cellulite challenge with people causing no pain, doing things like back thigh shearing, doing some of the tension and compression techniques of melt. And sure enough, 30 days later, the appearance of cellulite is less. Um, but here's my other thing I'd like to say to all women listening who are over 40. If you if you get into your 50s like I am, here's what's going to happen. Your vision is going to stink by the time you're in your 50s. And your boyfriends, husbands, wives, and girlfriends, their vision is going to stink too. So nobody's going <laughs> to see your cellulite except you when you're in particular lighting. My, my late husband, before he passed away, he used to say, your legs are so smooth and perfect. And I said, it's because you're blind. You can't see anything <laughs> close. So even I don't have any, he says, you don't have any wrinkles. I'm like blind, 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 blind. So I just think that we need to love ourselves more. And I think that we could care. I think people will still love you, whether you have cellulite or not. And if that's, the, if that is a pain point for you, I would really be digging a little deeper in how 
where you are in your self-practice. What I mean there is like your self-talk, your self-love, your self-honoring, self-trust, self-acceptance, because that's how we get through our life is loving ourselves so that we can be loving others. And, and that's the meaning of life altogether. So don't worry about your cellulite is my point. Amen. Amen. And just back to that comment on, uh, you know, somebody being blind or what they don't see because you don't see it either. I mean, you know, when someone is in the room with a naked woman that they love, they're not thinking about your flaws right then. Just Why saying. Look at your cellulite. Right. I see cellulite. They're like, I think so many is what they say. Exactly. Love it. Love it. Love yourself more. Okay. So we've really kind of come into this segmenting the fact that you are now in the club, like flipping 50 as well. You know, we talked a little bit in the green room telling stories, um, but you know, about how hot flashes and the fact that, okay, you know, like we're here, we've arrived and it's like, oh, this is what this is like. So talk to me about fascia and how it relates to hormones, those fluctuating undulating hormones in that ride that we're all going through. Yeah. Okay. So there's three things that everybody listening should know. First of all, fascia is the extracellular matrix on a microscopic level. It is the fluids of fascia are being driven into the lymphatic system through these pre-lymphatic channels. So fluids of fascia get pulled into the lymph system and then the lymph junk dumps all of the toxins and waste out of our body. So if our fascia has lost its fluid perfusion, it tends to bog down our lymphatic system. And now that venous return, that blood flow circulation is slowing down. And now you have more toxicity that's gonna increase your chances of cellulite disorders, diseases, sleep problems, hot flashes, and everything else. So that's number one. The second thing is that lining your gut is connective tissue, is fascia. And absorption occurs through that gut lining wall. Yeah. And you have to remember that certain hormones are also neurotransmitters and we're creating neurotransmitters in the gut. And as we get older, our enzymes are reducing our neurotransmitters like um, norepinephrine, uh, uh, dopamine, dopamine, right? You know, serotonin. Like oxytocin, serotonin are decreasing, but cortisol is increasing. And as that cortisol increases, we tend to have belly fat, we see more cellulite, we have more brain fog, all of these things are happening. So more than anything, I think the missing piece for most everybody as we're getting older is hormone balance. And this is really important. I, I hang out with my friend, Dr. Maggie, you, and we're talking about hormone balance all the time. We're creating a whole melt and hormone balance collection on melt on demand. So we can really explain how important your nutrition is your water intake is your, your overall disposition, happiness, and joy in your sleep. If you're not sleeping, you are altering the transition between the the dopamine and 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 all of the other hormones and and the way that these serotonin and dopamine have to up and down regulate from sleep cycle to wake cycle is knocking us on our socks and now what you get is a, a hormone flux and now you you know your your uh, estrogen is dropping you don't have your estrogen there and now all of these imbalances are starting to occur and it's giving everything from a cloudy head to uh, you know sleep problems to uh, weight gain um, you're grumpy all the time but uh, so and but but fascia is really playing a significant role because as the neurotransmitters can't switch over to hormones properly, that that's altering your nervous system. So you have a higher tendency toward depression, anxiety, and things like that. And fascia significantly relates to our uh, nervous system because of these things called glial cells. And glia is in your brain. Most of your brain cells are glia and there's tons of glia in your connective tissue. And so there's transportation of nutrient information, hormones happening in the body. So keeping your fascia in a hydrated supple state will actually help with the transportation of these hormones. And listen, in your superficial fascia, you have tons of hormones 
tons of hormones in your superficial fascia. Yet another reason why you wouldn't necessarily want to create a stick with knobs on it and scratch the heck out of your superficial tissue because you could alter your kidney function. You could give yourself like some sort of renal issues. Uh, you know, you could give yourself a, a yeast infection or bladder infection because your body's just dump, junk dumping toxins too fast into the excretory system. And you could cause all sorts of hormone fluctuations and um, other bad stuff like that. So better to hydrate your tissue daily, melt your hands and feet, you know, gentle compression through the body, that'll, that'll, that'll be better for you. And again, I'm 52 and I'm only just now starting to kind of notice these subtle signs. Like every once in a while, I'll have like, uh, like I, I, I'd said to Debbie, like all of a sudden, I'm like, what's that feeling on my body? I think I'm having a flash, right? But, but minimal problems. And the second that I feel things like that, I'm like, when was the last time I was on the roller and I'll spend a half hour on the roller and then I feel great. And again, a real key factor to hormone balance is sleep. You got to sleep. You got to sleep with an eye mask on. You mm-hmm. got to sleep in a dark room. You got to sleep in a cool climate room. Mm-hmm. You got to get to sleep at the same time, wake up at the same time. It's a due diligence of women to take care of their hormone balance by way of sleep. Yay, man. Thank you, baby Jesus. Okay. So you've hinted at this, like you need to melt, you need to melt. So we have to, let's break that down. What is melt? Let's define it. Sure. So I developed Melt out of my private practice because I was trying to get my clients out of my office so I could get back into doing like my daily life because I was seeing like 500 people every month and it was insane. So uh, Melt Melt is essentially a simple self-care practice that uses soft tools, soft rollers, and soft hand and foot therapy balls. And I teach people how to simulate light touch therapeutic intervention into their own bodies, the manual therapy to themselves. We blend mindful meditation practices with fascial uh, hydration techniques and ways to teach people how to create traction along the spine to decompress some of the unnecessary tension along the spine uh, in a self-care way. But we also have about 2,500 instructors worldwide. We have an app we do live classes on the app, you know, so we're as much as I call it a self-care practice, it's the only self-care practice where you don't have to be by yourself to do it. <laughs> Beautiful. Okay. So let's go back and recap. So you've hinted at some of these, but let's kind of collect them all in one area. So how is it that milk can help women transition through menopause? Sure. Well, I think the biggest thing Mel can help you with is keeping, again, that fluid, supple perfusion through the fascial matrix. A a big thing that happens to women through menopause is that their joints start to hurt them. They they lose muscle mass. And when you really talk to them, it's not just that we lose muscle mass, we're actually losing the ease of movement. And that's what that's what decreases our muscle mass. We're just not loading our bodies because our joints are killing us. So melt is very joint focused. I always say I've never heard of somebody getting a hamstring replacement as they get older, but lots of people get hip and knee replacements as they age. So melt is again, a nice, easy way to gently stimulate the connective tissue, both the superficial fascia where all those hormones are all the way into the deep matrix to improve joint stability. It helps with sleep. It'll make you feel more resilient. Uh, It decreases some of the stiffness that lots of people have. I always say, if you wake up and you feel as stiff as a dried out sponge left out overnight on your kitchen sink, you need to melt. You're already feeling the effects of this adaptation in your connective tissue. And we know that as we reach a particular age, our fluid matrix is declining. Collagen under a microscope should look like a crimp, but if the fluid flow diminishes in fascia, it kind of looks more like uh, somebody's put a flat iron to it. The the tissue's too flat. And that's how the collagen kind of starts to bind and get, it makes you feel more stiff. It, it uh, you lose some of your stability. And so melt really helps to improve stability, your overall mobility, uh, it just keeps your body feeling more vital. And, and I'm always saying, you know, I know I'm going to age. I just want to do it later in life. So if you want to kind of reduce wrinkles, cellulite, joint pain, melt is definitely a great addition to anybody's self-care practice because it's the missing link, right? I mean, everything else, diet, exercise, great things in a healthy lifestyle, but neither of those to address the adaptations in fascia and the nervous system, the autonomic aspects of our nervous system that daily living causes. So amazing. Yeah. And I, I just, 
You know, I mean, you were way ahead of your time. We talked about this too prior to actually coming on the show that I first, Sue came across my radar with Melt when she was doing uh, sessions at international fitness conventions. And this was before I began presenting. So I was just, you know, in the room, you know, oh my gosh, there she is. Can I touch her? You know, that kind of thing. I was still in the back of the room and she was already doing it and she's a baby. Like she could, she's my baby sister, you know, so she was way ahead of her time. So amazing that you've got all that bandwidth. And then now even more, like you're layering because you're in the boat rowing with everybody and, you know, experiencing your own ride. Everybody's is different, but I love it. And you have a very generous offer for 15% off of all your products. Where's the best place for listeners to go and get that, Sue? Yeah, so they can go to our website. It's meltmethod.com, M-E-L-T method.com. And there you can find out all about our actual physical products, Melt On Demand, our streaming platform, um, the instructors. You can see if there's an instructor near you or teaching classes. Uh, I do a lot of blog writing. Um, so you can really kind of learn a bit about the method on the website. And then if you want to really connect with me, I'm also, uh, we have a YouTube channel and I'm on Instagram and Facebook under Melt Method on all of them, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, just type in Melt Method and you'll find us. She's everywhere, folks. Okay. So now listeners is up to you. Did I miss a question? I think I got them all. I was thinking about you. So you can leave a question or a comment at the show notes. And that's also where you can get the link to meet with Sue. But there's also a special code to get that 15% off. So you want to make sure that you come and get it. I'm not going to say it because I'm afraid that you might either put the numbers or the words or miss the spaces. And so I want you to come over and get it. Flipping50.com forward slash melt, M-E-L-T. And what are you waiting for? Let's start flipping 50 today.